We pray together. Dear Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. Please stand.
seated. Time for the kids to come on up with Pastor Diane. Good to see all of you. Um, today, you, you get to be in Sunday school, but today in church, we hear from something that Jesus said. And Jesus said to his followers, he said, you are the salt of the earth. And he said, you are the light of the world. A light. Do you ever think of yourself as a light? Maybe not. Maybe. What kind of lights do we have around us? What do we have in here? Do you see some lights? Some different kinds of light? A candle, that's right, yeah, the candle is a light, yeah, there's, yeah, and there's uh, lights on the ceiling, actually the projector, that's another kind of light, right, so that we can see what's up here, all those lights, yep, yeah, so there's all kinds of lights, right, what's, what's the really big light outside? The sun, yeah, that's the big light, also, I brought this with me, I won't, I won't do it high, I don't want to shine it in your eyes, but, uh, do you ever use this? Yeah, right. Do you have your own flashlight? Yeah? It's a good thing to have a flashlight because sometimes you need one, right? It can really, if all the power goes out, yeah. Oh, it can be dark and this will help us see, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus also said, he, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said that about himself. But he wants us to share his light with others, his love, his care. And so that's why he tells us also, you are the light of the world, because we're meant to share Jesus with others too. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray, because then you can get your stickers and get on to Sunday school. Dear God, thank you for light and candles and flashlights and lamps and many lights. Help us share your light with everyone. We pray through Jesus, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. All right, thanks, boys and girls. You want to get a sticker on your way to your Sunday school class. Thanks. And we have uh, quite a few things now coming up soon. Next weekend is the anniversary photos, wedding and, or anniversary photos. If you want to turn those in, Pastor Dave has put a deadline of today. So, but you can take you can a, text it, you yeah. can email it, uh, just however you want to get it to me. If you, you have an actual photo, you can just use your phone, take a picture of the photo and email it or text it to me. And then I can edit it as needed and put it in the video. So uh, get that to me today because I'm going to start working on it um, next today? Saturday. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll start very right soon, away. Very soon. Yep. And then we have uh, coming up this week, we are continuing our Welcome to Communion class. That's for second grade and older. Uh, if there's anyone who hasn't uh, got in on this quite yet, uh, this is our second meeting, so I'd say it'd still be possible to catch up and love to include anyone of second grade or older who wants to be part of the Welcome to Communion, which we will celebrate on the weekend of February 22nd and 23rd. Also, just so you know, this Wednesday, there's a oodles of stuff going on. The choir is rehearsing. We have our Welcome Community class. There's an ongoing support group. And it's the women's group makes Wednesday night. So I want to let the women know you are in the chapel because with all the other stuff going on. So women's group this Wednesday will be in the chapel. And then we also have today uh, for our first meeting about the Mexico mission trip. This is a mission trip that will be in July, July 17 through 20, but this will be the 20th trip for Christ the Servant. So this will be the 20th trip. Really uh, anticipate having a very good group. Would love to uh, have people who've come before, but also have new people and have a very good group. And uh, Saved by Grace and Pahrump, their church is coming along with us too, and I know they're getting a good group together. So it'll be really, really great. So love to see folks after this service in the chapel. And now Pastor Rolf has special music to share with us. Good morning. Good morning. Did you know that there's a camera there? <laughs> Did you know that? And Pastor David asked me to stand here where the camera 
could read me today, didn't you? <laughs> Margaret and I now live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, as some of you maybe know, and every Sunday night it is our ritual to turn on the YouTube and watch through that camera, all of you. So when you go down the aisle next time, uh, not today, but next time, give a little wave and we'll see you. <laughs> Uh, today, I want to sing a piece called Calvary, the words by Henry Vaughan, who lived in the late 1600s, uh, the music by Paul Rodney, who lived in the late 1800s, and uh, Vaughan was much influenced uh, by another uh, poet by the name of Ger George Herbert, who lived even before Vaughan. They were metaphysical poets, metaphysical, beyond the physical. And uh, this is something that George Herbert said. A good mother is worth a hundred schoolmasters. I see some of you giving a nudge to the mothers here. Uh, good words are worth much and cost little. Thank you. 
us in the ending of Were You There? Sing with him. amazing, wasn't it? Thank you, Pastor Wall, for sharing your light with all of us today. Shortly after the return of Israel from exile in Babylon, the peoples were troubled by the in ineffectiveness of their fasts. God reminds them that outward observance is no substitute for genuine fasting that results in acts of justice, such as feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and clothing the naked. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 through 10. Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry out for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove, remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you should be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 9, will be read responsibly. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. 
Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous and lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will, will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given up freely to the poor, and their righteous stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Though people such as the Corinthians are enamored with human philosophy and wisdom, Paul continuously presents God's hidden wisdom, which is Jesus Christ crucified. True spiritual maturity involves judging ourselves and others in light of God's revelation in the cross. The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. For what human beings knows, what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God so that they may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are, fool for they are foolishness to them, and they are unstable to understand them. Because they are spiritually discerned, those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Please stand. <laughs> But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lamp stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we are uh, continuing in the season of Epiphany, the theme of light is a predominant theme throughout that. And uh, Epiphany started, of course, with the star, the light of the star, guiding the wise men to find the baby Jesus. And so we get other images of light or also kind of the light shining on Jesus, who is Jesus. And today we get in the gospel another perspective about this light, this light from God, but um, we'll get to that. We have also in our other readings some images that also are about the light of God and how God brings light to us. So the, the reading from Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, is speaking to God's people at a time they have 
had been in exile. They had been away from their homeland for generations. But finally, they'd been released and set free and been able to return. And so they're now starting to rebuild their city, Jerusalem. And they're starting to recover also their way of worship, things that they couldn't do because they were in a foreign land and they weren't allowed to worship the way that they had always worshiped. And so they're starting to renew some of these things. And, and that is, is a good thing, but what was missing was they were just kind of doing things almost like, like it's a checklist, like we're supposed to fast. Okay, check, do that one. And they weren't letting it really be God speaking to them, God affecting them. Because when we fast, when we give up other things, that's supposed to make more space for God. Then, and they just were not, I guess, part, aware of that part of it. So Isaiah is speaking for God, trying to help them understand that also what God wants is not just this relationship, but this relationship. Relationship with our, our neighbors and with one another. And so this is God speaking and Isaiah's giving this message. Is not this the fast that I choose? to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? God wants us to love your neighbor. Jesus also lifted that out, that is from the book of Leviticus, but Jesus lifted it out again. Love your neighbor as yourself. And also, there was a lot of justice that still needed to return. There was a lot of balance. People who had been forgotten, people who had been left aside, and God does not forget them. And so God does not want us to forget them either. And so Isaiah calls on the people to bring back that hope and lifting others up. I have, has crossed my mind when it keeps saying the breaking of the yoke. We're not talking about eggs here, <laughs> okay? Um, the yoke, like that big heavy wood piece that would be across the oxen or the ones that were plowing and, and it was heavy and they had to pull hard. And so that, that means when you lay burdens on people or you oppress people, that, that's the breaking of the yoke of that oppression. And so that's, that's what the prophet is talking about. But when we remember those things and when we carry out those things, those caring for our neighbor, then your light shall break forth like the dawn. Then the light comes. And then also he goes on, he says, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted. That pointing of the finger phrase always also jumps out at me. And maybe you've heard this before, you probably were taught by a parent or a teacher or somebody, but the saying goes, if you point a finger at someone else, there's how many more fingers pointing back at yourself? <laughs> a lot more, right? And, and we are so good at the pointing the finger when in truth we should be honest enough with ourselves to say where, where we're the ones who are making problems or making difficulty. And the speaking of evil. You know, there's a lot of uh, throwing around of criticism and choosing of sides, and this was written more than thousands of years ago, and yet it seems so present and part of what we're dealing with. And we're encouraged to let go of that, and that when we go, let go of that, again, the light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom will be like the noonday then God's light is with us and among us. And in the psalm, it also brings up that image of light. He says, the light shines in the darkness for those that are merciful and full of compassion. Caring for one another. Well, Jesus is talking at this point in the Gospel of Matthew, what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And that's a really, really big message that Jesus gives. And in, God, in Matthew's Gospel, it comes real early on, real early on that that's shared. And it says, the, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. And I've heard from people who have traveled to Israel that it's more like hills. <laughs> By our perspective, it's like, well, that's kind of a big hill, but that's, 
But still, Jesus was up and he was speaking to a whole bunch of people. And mountains in the Bible also can represent that that's a place where you meet God. Uh, very special places like that. So it could be a special meaning that that's where you're meeting God and Jesus is the one who is giving out this message. He starts the message with what we call the Beatitudes. Those uh, blessed are the poor in the spirit, they shall see God. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall receive mercy. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. I never can get them all in order exactly, but, but he, he gives us this image of God's kingdom where, again, those who have been hurt are, are lifted up and those who have been pushed aside are brought back. And that was so different from the world in that day. And, it, and maybe, maybe the people listening to Jesus were, start thinking that, well, if we live with this, are we meant to retreat from the world? Are we meant to separate ourselves from the world? And Jesus now, is, this is what he says next. And I think he's maybe answering that kind of thought. Because then he goes on and he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. It's pretty clear. And he says, put it on, the, you know, shine it around, let it shine. So we're not meant to, even though we're not part of this world, we are not meant to hide from this world or hide our faith from this world. We are meant to let it be shared. And he uses those two images of salt and light. And salt is, uh, is interesting to think about a little bit. Now, in our time, it's so easy to get salt, right? So easy to get salt. And yet, long ago at this time, salt was more rare. It was harder to uh, have. It was actually considered fairly precious. It was considered worth so much that sometimes they would pay people with salt for their work. So you'd be paid in salt. And that's where we get the word salary. Salary and salt are related. So that's how special it was. It wasn't just anywhere, it was, it was special. And what was salt used for? Well, I think this is always the same and doesn't change is it enhances flavor, right? We, we, we add it to food to make the food taste better. And I know that uh, because of watching Food Network, I've learned uh, not only is it we add it to the savory dishes to, again, make it taste better, but even if you add just a little bit of salt to something sweet, it brings out the sweet even as well. Not too much, just a, just a little pinch, and it'll, it'll actually make you notice the sweet even more. So it enhances, it brings out the flavor. And if I think about that, and Jesus is telling us to be salt, how are we helping bring out the best in others? How are we looking for what they have and what gifts they have and, and lift that up and encourage that? How are we salt for others? Salt is also uh, for preserving preserving food, and maybe that is an image of uh, protecting and caring. How do we do that? Salt was also for um, healing. Now, I will admit, I don't know a whole bunch of techniques for using salt for healing other than you've got a sore throat, mix some salt water, gargle with it, <laughs> don't drink it. <laughs> and, uh, but that can help soothe a sore throat, so I don't know, soothing, healing, helping. Um, what? Oh, saline, you're right, that's true, that's critical, that's true, that is, or, okay, I wear contacts, I need saline for my contacts, so I guess it is, yeah, we, we still have salt used in a lot of ways even to help our wellness. And so again, um, what is helpful to people? What helps them be well? How can we help someone be well? Well, then uh, Jesus goes on with another image then, this is the light, this is our, again, getting that light image in there. And he says that you are the light of the world. Now, I notice that Jesus doesn't say, you might be the light of the world. You could be the light of the world. Uh, maybe someday when you get it all together, you will be the light of the world. He says, you are the light of the world. Just, just already, already. It's not someday, it's, he says it. 
present tense, you are the light of the world. Now the Bible, again, talks about God and light in, in a lot of times, a lot of places. And so in, in Psalm 27 is a pretty well-known verse. It says, you are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Saying, God, God, you are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And then also talks about um, God's own word as light. In Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God's own word is light. Um, the very heavens reveal, the light of the heavens reveal again God is our creator and who God is for us. In John chapter 8, Jesus says about himself, I am the light of the world. So we have many times talking about God, but this is kind of more unique. This is saying you, us, we are the light of the world. Now, that got me thinking about different kinds of lights, like I was uh, talking with the kids earlier. And so I was imagining what, uh, you know, what are some different kinds of lights. And so I thought of candles. We always pretty much have candles. Now, last night, I asked people, because our, our service is just late enough that it is getting dark, outside and I said, what if we had turned off all the lights? And the only light we had was the candlelight. We were gonna have a little trouble reading, reading or singing or doing some of those things maybe. But there is something about the candlelight that I think is, um, it's a gentle light. Um, comforting, I think. And to me, one of the very best moments of the whole year ever is on Christmas Eve when we hold our candles, and that's all of the light that we have, and we're singing Silent Night. And there's just such great peace and beauty in that moment. So a candlelight is its own kind of special light. And then I thought of how that means that we can be comforting or we can be uh, compassionate towards others. And then I thought of another kind of light, kind of on the opposite of the spectrum, would be a bonfire. Now that's a really big light, it makes a lot of light, right? And noticeable, and so some people are like that. They're very bold, they're very, um, you know, tell about Jesus, and they're, they're really great in giving that kind of witness and very, very much talking and sharing, and that's fantastic. But sometimes that's a little too much for some people. You know, a bonfire, you can only, you know, can't get too, too close, so maybe even though we need that boldness and we need those kind of people, not everybody can, that doesn't work for everybody. It might be overwhelming for someone. And then I thought of another light being a flashlight. I talked with the kids a little bit about a flashlight earlier. And now when I think of the image of a flashlight, I try not to shine in people's eyes or something. This is not that, well, that's kind of right. Um, a flashlight is, in my way of thinking, it is very useful, very helpful. We really do need flashlights at times. Or, okay, nowadays if I had punch enough buttons, it's this, right? People don't carry flashlights anymore because they're like, oh, here. So, um, but a flashlight can be, though, is something we only turn to when we need something. When we're a little bit of a crisis, the lights went out or something has happened. And, and so, like, it's like when we kind of go along, go along, along, and then something bad happens. It's like, God, God, I need you. God, God, help, God, help. See? And we all do that. I do that. I've done that. But, but hopefully our, our faith is a little more than just I run to it in that moment when I'm, like, feeling worried or kind of scared or something. It's hopefully something that's not just turned to only in that moment. I will say this, though, also. Uh, another way of thinking of a flashlight is if I've lost something at home, or here, I will do this. I'll turn off the lights, and I'll turn on the flashlight, and I'll start going carefully, looking. And I have to tell you, it works so much of the time. I find whatever it was. So there's something about that special focus. And so, so maybe that's another way, though, as a flashlight. You're someone who's looking for someone who's lost, and you're trying to find them, help them. So that could be another kind of way of thinking. Are you like a flashlight? Another image of light that I was thinking of was a lighthouse. 
I really like that image of light. A lighthouse is what helps give protection, it helps guide, it helps bring someone who might have uh, wandered back to safety, find their way home. And so maybe that's the kind of light you could be, is helping someone feel safe again and know that they're welcome, that, they, that they're home, that, that, that they belong, and that God loves them and God forgives them and they're accepted. And so maybe being like a lighthouse sometime. And we're not just one light. There's all kinds of different lights. So what kind of light might you be? How might God be using you as that kind of light to minister to someone else? I was in Denver this past weekend and had the joy of uh, performing, officiating the wedding for my nephew and his now wife <laughs> after we finished now, married. And I found such joy. It was so wonderful and I have great anticipation for their long and happy marriage. I, I can just see that there's so much going for them and, and their faith is such a core part of that. That was so, so important. Well, after the, the wedding ceremony, then we were having the, the reception. And, and so I just um, paused to talk to one of the people who was working there, who was helping put it all together. And uh, didn't expect, you know, just kind of a little chat. And then somehow though, um, she opened up to me and she told me about something very painful. And I was able to be there and be that compassionate presence and tell her that I would pray for her and I would continue to pray for her. And I felt like God put me there at that moment to be a candle. Just that giving her my full attention and letting her know that she is cared for. God does that to us. God puts us in places to let us be his light, his presence in the world. Jesus says it. It is true. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. By the grace of God, we get to share that light and God's love in this world. We are going to also uh, sing another hymn that I think is a good connection for this.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand up, walk around, greet each other with that peace of Christ. Continue with the offering. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our communion ministers to come forward, and I would ask for five communion ministers to assist us. And everyone is invited and welcome to share these gifts of God's grace and forgiveness. And we have another song about um, light. It's from Psalm 19. And uh, yesterday evening, as I arrived here for uh, Saturday night worship, I looked out uh, to, the, to the east, and I saw the biggest full moon I think I've ever seen. And at the instant I looked out at it, a jet was flying right across the moon on the approach pattern. Pretty cool. Thank you, Lord. Then this morning at 6.30, coming here to church, I looked to the west over the mountains and the clouds, and I saw the biggest full moon setting in the west. And it just reminds me that so often we just don't think about things, but sometimes it just strikes us, uh, the glory of God.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Put your hand up real high if you've been on a Mexico mission trip. Put your hand up real high. You get extra points for greeting any of those people who've gone to a Mexico mission trip. Go do that now. And meet me in the chapel for talking about this year. <laughs> 